Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Hello, bonjour, Alberta. I'm Anne Boiteau. This is season 11 of our program. And tonight we welcome with us Rob Leonard, the history wrangler, and also Larry Vassiliou, who is president of the historic Bow Valley Ranch Society. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to be here. Thank you. So, Larry, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about where you're from, and if you're not from around here, what brought you here? <laughs> I was born in uh, Yorkton, Saskatchewan. I grew up in a farm north of Yorkton. I have four brothers, uh, five brothers and a sister. And uh, I came to Calgary in the early 70s, and uh, when Calgary was probably about 600,000 people, it's seen a lot of growth, and. Um, many changes in the city of Calgary. And uh, uh, my wife and I met, had, uh, <coughs> built a house down in Fish Creek. We were close to Fish Creek and Deer Ridge. So we walked through uh, the park. We uh, had dogs and we would walk uh, there frequently. So uh, one of our adventures was uh, seeing this home, that home. that home basically falling apart. Uh, windows broken <coughs> and kind of vandalism and we were very concerned, first of all, for the it maybe being a fire hazard or burning to the ground. So we were inquiring about uh, why and what had happened, etc. And then and we um, uh, did it belong to the province? Belonged to the province. It's yeah. in Fish Creek Park. So we uh, were uh, weren't getting any action. So we wrote <coughs> a letter to uh, our premier at the time, Ralph Klein. So we've known him from the city of Calgary days. And within a week, we uh, got a response and said, I'd like you to speak to my MLA, Heather Forsyth. So we did. In a very f short, brief conversation, we went into a discussion about uh, the home and what was going on. And uh, one thing led to another. So <coughs> we did a lot of history and uh, found out what Calgary's rich history existed at this location. So that got me excited because I love old stuff and I love history and uh, that's my billywick. So um, one thing led to another and put a program together and offered it to, to the uh, province and saying, well, this is what you guys should do with it. And uh, finding out that they were going to demolish the home, it was ready for demolishment. That was the plan uh, back The then. plan was demolishment. I said, that can't happen. So we uh, put a program together. We formed the Ranch at Fish Creek Restoration Society. <coughs> and uh, through that, we um, raised enough money to restore the home, and we opened it up as a fine dining restaurant in the year 2000. So in it, what we did is honor all the pioneers in the history of Calgary, which goes way back to uh, our indigenous people's times with David Thompson uh, canoeing the Bow River and our uh, people that lived and tented and in the area. and. Uh, Going back to our first English settler, John Glenn, who uh, has many uh, uh, things. He was a fur trader. He uh, uh, guided the Northwest, Mo or Northwest Mounted Police from Fort Benton into Alberta. He was a scout. He was an agriculture guy, and he was very uh, famous in great crops. He was, I consider him <coughs> the father of irrigation in Alberta. And he did so well that uh, during his pretty time, he could recognize the opinion of Canada. Dominion Canada basically bought him out, moved him, and uh, at that time Treaty 7 was in the process. They signed Treaty 7 and uh, it became an Indian farm supply house to train, 
our Indians to become farmers. Well, that fell apart, didn't go anywhere after two years. And uh, as this process was going on, uh, Western Canada was being developed and uh, two gentlemen, uh, the Hall brothers, came from England, uh, went up to and ranched with their uncle in Kamloops, came across, drove 1,200 head of horses to, uh, uh, they had a contract to supply horses to the Northwest Mounted Police. He seen the land and uh, he then started developing ranching, got contracts with the railways and uh, expanded in growth and in 1896 <coughs> he built this home. So there's a lot of rich history and what we did through this is honor all those people as we go through this stage of restoration. And uh, How long did it take you to restore the home? It took us two years. Two years? Yeah. It was a lot of work because it uh, structurally it's very sound but uh, there's a lot of cosmetics that were damaged and <coughs> those kind of things, and we had to retool it and had three, uh, over time, various renovations. Because after Hall, uh, the Burns family bought it. Senator Burns bought William Roper Hall and expanded his ranching empire, which he had about 450,000 acres. He was a large conglomerate. So he used this for his main um, cattle empire. So that history we reflected back into honoring those pioneers and that's what we still do is we don't reflect that in uh, uh, the verse from that and uh, through it it's developed education art and we honor all that <coughs> culture as we go along and that's so where you come in that is correct and where are you from yeah my dad was a banker for 22 years like little Johnny Cash songs and I've been everywhere so <laughs> actually born in Ottawa I um, went to Toronto Calgary for three years and back, actually back in grade five is when I had my first exposure to the Calgary Stampede. It's actually the young Canadians and the grade five performed in front of Queen Elizabeth on opening night, which is quite mm -hmm. something that actually my, for my stamp, and I've subsequently been seven other Calgary Stampedes as well. So I'm very passionate about uh, obviously Stampede. And from Calgary, I actually went down to Montreal for high school. And I learned French on a Jean Caire up in Northern Quebec. Oh, yes. And then I moved back to Calgary. And back in 2004 is when I wrote my award-winning book, historical fiction book and last 12 years and actually my, I'm known now as Alberta's history wrangler the session my 44 years of entertaining and my 12 years of being passionate about Alberta history put them together and there they're go. doing lots and lots of exciting things in the city not only at the ranch but also outreach for example I'm teaching now a program at Bow Valley College called Amazing Alberta History for New Albertans <sighs> and I did my first course we're looking over three times a year first program last year it's interesting, no, the auditorium was 70% full. This year, I received an email last week. It said, listen, Rob, we anticipate standing room only. Because wow. Used last time. So I just excited. Amazing. Yeah, and I took that program. And then I've also done, now have an amazing Alberta history for seniors. So I have a seniors program down at Historic Ranch at lunchtime. Well, with that, and also work with the University of Calgary. They have international students from all around the world that come to U of C for six weeks to learn English. So a woman in charge says, history ranger, think we come on down to the ranch, can you show us Tell some history and yeah. have some fun. Of course, the neat thing is, apart from the amazing building here, <clears throat> there's also an incredible developed garden called the, the Artisan Gardens. It has 100, 175 five pieces of artwork. Wow. So, of course, not only being entertained, of course, I sing about Alberta history and it's just uh, an educated as well. So, it's a really exciting experience. So, they're so impressed last year that UFC is coming back again in, uh, in a couple months' time. And it's amazing. They have programs I think, from 32 different countries <gasps> that'll come down to the ranch. So. When Larry and I first met, when I first came on board, he said, Rob, we have a very special place here that's been around since 1873. So let's not look at just the Calgary province-wide, but let's, let's really export this exciting thing. And of course, an opportunity. There's 120 students from all around the world. They learn about the historic ranch. Yes. And two, three weeks later, they're flying back to their home country around the world. So it's yeah. really exciting all the things that we're doing yes. down at the ranch. And so what's coming <coughs> up? Uh, first thing coming up, uh, let's see, you've got the history fair. Yes, I, I wear another hat as well, but beaucoup de chapeaux, they say in French, that I'm actually on part of the national program, the History Fair program. This actually takes place, I'm um, just not far from here, the Aerospace Museum. So essentially we have schools all throughout central and the Cal central Alberta and Calgary area that the top History Fair project come to the, come to the Aerospace Museum. So we select the top, yeah, that's exciting. And that's where the ranch found the first youth ambassador. That's right, ambassador. exactly. And what is right, I'm Eden actually not, exactly. So what, the second component, where the students got to take a video, three, four minute video of their project. 
So it's interesting, actually, tomorrow I'm off to Rocky Mountain House, exact same history for Eden School. Ah. It's interesting, in the last two years, the same representative, representative all of Alberta going to Ottawa is from that school. When I first met Eden Star Project, I said, listen, I'll bet you you're off to Ottawa. And I want hundreds of kids, actually thousands of kids are involved, sure enough, she represents the province. So we're just delighted that she's now our new youth ambassador. And of course, the exciting thing about uh, Quebec City, we're looking at Centre Quebec City next year for a big carnival. Yes. Which I'm really... 60th about. anniversary exactly. we're celebrating this Absolutely. year of the, the sister cities. Exactly. Twinning of the two cities. And uh, you've also got a contest going about uh, the Alberta flag. Yes, and that's something Larry and I sat down with. And, and what inspired me for this is my former position as the director of Alberta Heritage School Affairs. I met close to 20,000 kids across the province. But going to Pac Jim said, kids, who all knows when Alberta's birthday is? Virtually nobody knew the answer. 90% of adults in Alberta don't know the answer. And I won't embarrass your cameraman, but a lot of people don't. So it's September 1st. So what happened is we, I sat down with Larry and said, Larry, let's, let's create an activity, an event, a big event at our historic ranch. Yes. So we had it last year. A really exciting element is very much an educational program as well. So we celebrated the it's actually 100th, 110th anniversary of Alberta oh, last September. Big oh, big one. Yes. We had a military parade come down the promenade, <gasps> featuring the King's Own Calgary Regiment Band. We had the RCMP Calgary Police Force dressed in their vintage uniform. And what's really exciting, we actually had a reenactment of the very first uh, ceremony back in 1905. And I spent hours reading over the newspapers, the 1905 newspapers, and they got essentially exactly what they said. So whether it was the first Lieutenant Governor, uh, George Boulier of Alberta, and the neat thing about him, before he became Lieutenant Governor, he's a school principal. Oh. So we actually had a, a principal from Don Bosco School close by, and he actually read out the parts for the swearing-in ceremony. The historian, they all dress in tails, and thanks to Moore's and my dad, Moore's suits. They, so and you're going to have a very special oh, oh, guest. Oh, absolutely. And this year, we're delighted in that we have the, uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, for Honor Lois Mitchell, attending. And back to the, the second element, back to the flag contest. So Larry and I said, what can we do next? And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have an Alberta birthday flag contest? So we started, had launched it back in February, and essentially we had 254 well, flags that were entered. And the stipulation had to be a student in Alberta. We had submissions from grade three students all the way up the Alberta College of Art. So we narrowed down 256 down to the top three, and now we're voting on those top three. And on August 6th, with the voting stops, and we'll compile all the, the, all the votes. And the winning flag will be hoisted for the first time September 1st by the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. But the really exciting thing is, next fall we have a very keen MLA, Richard Gottfried. He's taking that the winning flag to the Alberta legislature to get voted on. So the fact is, so if it gets voted on, if it's passed, then in fact it become the official Alberta birthday flag, the first one in Canada, and every September 1st from now on they'll raise the flag of the legislature elsewhere across the province. So very, very, nice. very exciting indeed. Exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. And uh, what, in very short time, we have about 30 seconds, okay. so talk to us about what's going to happen at the ranch this summer. <coughs> Yeah. Well, we have a lot of things. Are uh, we've married a unique uh, situation with Village Brewery? July twentieth, we're unveiling our own beer called the Village Rancher, wow. which is uh, fantastic because it leads to it's a, uh, a number micro of things. Uh, yeah, yeah. microbrew, mm -hmm. and uh, there on uh, also we're married with uh, Shaw Birds for Kitties with the the uh, Canyon Meadows uh, golf tournament, which is Shaw uh, sponsored, and Tom Watson's uh, the beta headliner. So we're part of that. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Rob. My pleasure. And uh, thank you for being here today. For all of you out there, please stay tuned. We will continue en français.